The first thing we see in this section is just basically a de definition of a rational function. A rational function just means you have one function over another. It's written in fraction form. So you have some function of x in the numerator, some function of x in the denominator, and of course the denominator cannot be zero. And they give us some examples here of graphs of rational functions, which we're going to be doing this chapter. The graph of the rational function, the one on the left, is negative 2x over x squared plus 2, I mean plus 1. There is no value here that makes the denominator 0, okay? So you can never make the function x squared plus 1 0, right? Using real numbers. Because if I were to try to make that 0, set it equal to 0, I'd get the square root of negative 1. That's not in my real number range. So there is nothing in this particular graph where my x on the denominator is 0. For this one, there's two points where it's 0. Where can I make x squared minus 4 0? Two. two points. 2 and? Negative. negative 2. And so you'll notice in this graph, they have these lines that are dashed in your book at 2 and negative 2. Those indicate that there is a problem in the denominator at those two points. And then if you look at the last one, um, <clears throat> there is one number that makes this last one 0 in the denominator, which would be negative 1. And so you can see that at negative 1, we have this dashed line showing that the graph can never be negative 1. All right. <clears throat> and so then they tell you this next definition, point of discontinuity. If A is a real number for which the denominator of a rational function is 0, then A is not in the domain of F. The graph of f is not continuous at x equals a, and the function has a point of discontinuity at x equals a. All right, so if there is something that makes your denominator zero, it is called a point of discontinuity, meaning it's not continuous. The graph jumps over that, right? Um, you'll notice that on these, the second and third one, the graph's going along, it's, it completely changes. It goes over this line and then starts almost like a new graph here. Then it goes over this line and starts a new graph. Same thing here. That's a point of discontinuity. It's one type of point of discontinuity. All right, so if there is a point that makes your denominator zero, this graph is discontinuous at that point, and that point is called the point of discontinuity. All right? Domain, that means all your values of x's. So you would say it would be all real numbers for that middle graph except negative 2 and positive 2. My x can be all real numbers except those two. That would be my domain. All right, let's look at the next page. So all they're asking us to do here is find any points of discontinuity, any points where this particular graph um, is discontinuous. And we're always talking about real numbers here when we're graphing. We're graphing on the coordinate plane. And so for the first one, if I want to find points of discontinuity for this first one, I am going to look at the denominator, and I'm going to figure out where this denominator is 0. The way you figure that out is you set it equal to 0. So just like the last two on bell work, you're going to take this particular function, and you are going to set it equal to 0 and solve. And so how would you solve this particular one? And so if I factor it, I'm going to get x plus 1, x plus 1. They're, they're both the same, so at x equals negative 1, that is going to be my point of discontinuity. Point of discontinuity. So there is one point of discontinuity at x equals negative 1. All right, let's look at the next one. For this one, I am going to set this denominator equal to 0 and see about this one. When I do this particular one, I get x squared equals negative 1. What's the problem? We're talking about real numbers, right? This is not going to be a real number. So this particular one is, has no points of discontinuity. All right, no points of discontinuity. Um, so this is a continuous function. All right, so go ahead and try A, B, and C. For each rational function, find any points of discontinuity.
So <clears throat> x squared minus 14 is a special case. It's the difference of two squares. x plus 4, x minus 4. Or you could have just done x squared minus 16 equals 0. Add your 16 over. Take the square root of both sides, so x equals positive or negative 4. You can solve that way. I'll do it now. The same way that I did this one, right? I did it that way. Mm -hmm. This one you should have done factoring like we did for the example. Yeah, just so for, positive 4. Right, so you go x plus 4 equals 0, subtract 4, x equals negative 4. All right. Mm -hmm. So look at the bottom of page 492. They've given us three graphs here and then one at the top. <clears throat> the first graph, you'll notice... They have given us x plus 1 over x minus 1, x plus 2. They've already factored it for us, all right? So what are my points of discontinuity here? Negative 2 and positive 1. Right, so my points of discontinuity here are negative 2 um, and positive 1. So I have this guy right here, negative 2 and positive 1, right? Negative 2 and positive 1. Um, look at the difference between that one and the one next to it, all right? So let's look at the one next to it. What's my point of discontinuity here? Positive 2. But if we look at positive 2, I do not have a dashed line. My graph actually doesn't change. It looks like it's a continuous graph, except what's happening? There is a hole right here. There's a hole. The difference is that this x minus 2, if I were to simplify this, could cancel with that x minus 2. All right? These on this side here could not cancel with anything. So they formed what's called vertical asymptotes. It's a, a line that your graph gets in it infinitely close to, but doesn't actually touch, all right? When you can remove it or when you can cancel it, then you have a hole, all right? So two types of discontinuities. Vertical asymptote, that is not removable. I cannot simplify it with anything in the numerator. Holes happen when I can simplify it with the numerator, all right? And so the difference is this graph right here on the right looks identical to the graph y equals x plus 1. All right? My y-intercept at 1, a slope of 1 over 1. The only difference is at the point 2, 3, which would normally happen in that linear equation, I have this hole. So these two graphs look identical except for the hole. The hole tells me that my original equation had a problem there or a discontinuity, all right? Look at the third one. For this third one, we have the function x minus 2 over x minus 2, x minus 1. I have two discontinuities there. What are my two discontinuities? What do, where do they happen? Uh, positive 2 and positive 1. Right, positive 2 and positive 1. But for positive 2, what can I do with it? Cancel it out. So at positive 2, I have a hole. At positive 1, I have an asymptote. So you can have both, or none, or, you know, one type or the other. All right? For this one, this last one's a little bit different. So we have x minus 2 over x minus 2 squared. All right? So basically, you have x minus 2 over x minus 2, x minus 2. So it looks like it's going to be a whole line and an asymptote, right? Like, it looks like it's removable and non-removable. When that happens... You'll notice the graph only has this vertical asymptote here. No hole, because you can't have a hole where the graph doesn't exist at all, all right? It actually changed directions after that. And so, of course, there would be no hole, because for a hole, it has to basically go through that discontinuity and you just have a hole at it, all right? Vertical asymptotes. The rational function f of x equals p of x over q of x has a point of discontinuity for each real zero of q of x. So that first statement says that anywhere this q of x is 0, I have a discontinuity. Something happens with the graph where it cannot actually be on there because we can't divide by 0. If p of x and q of x have no common real zeros, then the graph has a vertical asymptote at each real 0 of q of x. If p of x and q of x have a common real 0, then there is a hole in the graph. So if you can remove it, it's going to create a hole. If you can cancel it out, it will create a hole. If you cannot, it'll create a vertical asymptote, all right? So find all of your vertical asymptotes. Example two. 
So you're telling me what you have there. And actually on a quiz, you're going to label them all. You're going to say whole, vertical, and then we're about to do horizontal. All right? And so for this first one, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find every place that our denominator is zero. Well, they have already factored it for us. So at x minus 2, you will have a zero at 2. And at x minus 3, you will have a zero at 3. Are either of those can canceled? Can you cancel either of those out? No. So you're going to say I have vertical. These are both vertical. All right. For B, again, they've already factored it. I have a discontinuity to x at x minus 2, which means it's going to happen at x equals 2. Can you cancel this one? Yes, right here. So this one is a whole. And if I were to write vertical, I would say none. I have no vertical. All right, no vertical. All right, let's look at the last one. I have x minus 3, x minus 3, and x plus 4. At both of your x minus 3s, you're going to get a 0 at x equals 3. At x plus 4, you're going to get a 0 at x equals negative 4. Let's look at the 3s. Is it cancelable? One of them is, right? You still have one left over. So what is this? Vertical asymptote or whole? But what happens when it's both? The last example of the graphs showed us this. Top of page 493. Cool. All right, so at 3, we have just a vertical. What about the negative 4? Is it cancelable? Yes. yes. So that is going to be a whole. All right. So for this last one, x squared minus 1 is a special case. This is the difference of two squares. x plus 1, x minus 1 is that factoring. All right, so there are actual shortcuts to this. A graph of a ra rational function has at most one horizontal asymptote. So vertical, you can have multiple, and we have seen that. But for horizontal, the most you will have is one. You can have none. Um, but at most, you will have is one. If the graph of a rational function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0 if the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. I'm going to give you an example. 3x squared plus 5 over 4x cubed minus 1. The degree of the numerator is 2. The degree of the denominator is 3. This would have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. All right, always. The bottom is getting bigger faster than the top. You're approaching zero. All right? The next one says if the degree of the numerator and the denominator are equal, then the graph has a horizontal asymptote at y equals a over b, where a is the leading coefficient of the numerator, b is the leading coefficient of the denominator. So in this example, I would say 3x cubed plus 5 over 4x cubed minus 1. Degree of the top is 3. Degree of the bottom is 3. You have a horizontal asymptote for this guy at y equals 3 fourths. The coefficient of the highest exponent, the coefficient of the highest exponent. Okay? And then if the degree of the numerator is greater, then it has no horizontal asymptotes. So if I were to have 3x to the fourth plus 5 over 4x cubed minus 1, Degree of the top is 4, degree of the bottom is 3. Horizontal here would be none. All right? So let's look at an example here for horizontal. Find the horizontal asymptote. What is the degree of the numerator? 1. 1. What's the degree of the denominator? 
one. So I'm going to use my leading coefficients, three over, what's my coefficient of the denominator there? One. So my, it has a horizontal asymptote then at y equals three. Check your work horizontal is the easiest ones we do, right? So they've given us this function y equals x plus 2 over x plus 3x minus 4. They want us to sketch this graph, all right? Um, for this one, the first thing I'm going to do is determine horizontal asymptotes, all right, horizontal. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find vertical or holes, all right? Horizontal is the first one. What is the, de what is the degree of the numerator? Two. Of the numerator? So the degree of this is 1, and then the degree of the denominator is going to be what if I foiled it? 2, because it's x squared. So I'm going to have a horizontal then at y equals 0. So if I were to sketch that horizontal, it's actually where? Where is y equals 0? Right here, yep. Yeah. So I have a horizontal. I'm doing a little bit below so you can actually see it. There we go. Here's my horizontal. All right, and then I'm going to look at vertical. Vertical is where the denominator is zero but does not cancel. And in this case, it's both of them, right? I have two vertical asymptotes. Where are they? Negative three and positive four. Yep, at x equals negative three and x equals four. So that's going to all just be a dashed line at negative three. These are not actually part of my graph. They're just indicating how my graph is going to look, all right? So I have this one. A negative three, all right, and then at positive four, all right, positive four. All right, they're dashed because it's not included. Think about when we graphed inequalities. When it wasn't included in the graph, it was a dashed line. That's what you're indicating here, all right? All right, so at this point, I am going to try to figure out where, um, this actually graphs, all right, when I sketch it. And we're gonna do more things going forward to figure it out, but right now we're just gonna pick some points. So if I pick a point over here, let's say, and I would probably pick not a huge one, but let's say I pick negative five. All right, if I have an x value of negative five, that's negative five plus two over negative five plus three, negative five minus four, all right? Where is that guy going to be? He's going to be positive or negative, by the way. All right, let's just do it. All right, so negative 5 plus 2 is? All right, and then we have negative 5 plus 3. Negative 5 minus 4. All right, it's going to be negative. So negative 3 over positive 18 is negative 1 sixth, right? So he's going to be way up here. All right, okay, way up here. All right, let's look closer to it. Let's look at maybe f negative four then. All right, if I put in a negative four, negative four plus two over negative four plus three, negative four minus four, top is gonna be negative two, then I have negative one times negative eight, right? Negative two ninths. Is that bigger or smaller? What that tells me, if that's gonna be further negative, what that tells me is that this graph, all right, I cannot, I cannot, this is a set in stone, I cannot cross over this guy, all right, I can't. Um, so my graph is going to do something like this. He's out obviously here and going that way. It's gonna do this little curve thing that throws off, all right? So once you figure out where this is, you can, it's pretty much always going to look like that. All right? The middle one gets a little iffy, but this one will always look like that if you figure out if it's positive or negative because it's going to be below your, this asymptote and on this side of this one. So it's going to look almost like just a curve that goes infinitely close to the pink line, infinitely close to the blue line. Our memories, and we're going to say, how do I know where intercepts happen? All right? How do I know where intercepts happen? Well, my y-intercept should always happen when my x is zero, right? And my x-intercept should always happen where my y is zero. Make sense? All right?
where my x is zero. Well, I just plug it in, right? Zero plus two over zero plus three, zero minus four, right? Everybody agree with that? Zero plus two gives me two over three times negative four, right? So a negative one six. So this little tiny place right here, all right? X-intercept, that's where my y is zero. When you have a rational function, your y is zero where your numerator is zero, all right? Your y is zero where your numerator is zero. So I'm gonna say y is gonna be zero where my x plus two is zero. When does that happen? Negative two. Negative two. The only time this doesn't occur is if you have a hole at negative two. So if it had canceled with my denominator, then it wouldn't be an intercept because I have a hole there. But because I don't, I actually cross here. Now, here's the deal. I have a horizontal asymptote. Remember I said you can get infinitely close to it but not cross over it for verticals? For horizontals, you can jump over it. So when I look at this guy, I know I can't touch these two blue ones at all. I can't go over them, I can't cross them. So it's definitely going up this way. So it's gonna go infinitely there. And somewhere it's gonna turn and it's gonna go this way. And if you're not sure, you can pick another point. You can pick a two and plug it in. Two plus two is four, two plus three is five, two minus four, and you're gonna see that it's a negative over here at two, right? It's definitely gonna be in the negative range at two. It's not going back up, all right? And so we're just sketching. We're just picking some points and sketching. Your intercepts are great ways to sketch. Question. So, at two, mm -hmm. um, why is the horizontal one zero? Something because the denominator has a bigger degree than the numerator. Okay. And so the thing we have to sketch is just the horizontal, mm -hmm. which was the, was the vertical and your intercepts. Because it was zero. Mm -hmm. And then the verticals, which is negative three, negative four, so it's that, mm -hmm. that's one. Mm -hmm. And just one thing? You want to find on any intercepts you have, y-intercept and x-intercepts. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do this right one differently. I'm not actually going to do it out. I'm just going to figure if it's positive or negative. All right, and the graphic. Mm -hmm.